must, uh, if you took a kid from today and you stuck them back in the 80s, they'd probably feel like they're living in a blackout. <laughs> <laughs> there's no Facebook. TV is at certain hours. There's nothing on demand. Um, you know, there's just a couple of movies playing at sort of select times, not any time during the day. Uh, and and so you really starve for cultural input from the world. And I certainly only got them from movies. And actually, when you get out there and, and film, that is your biggest challenge, is how, to, is how to work in this 3D space in a 2D frame that is attractive and draws you in. Now, people are so good at it these days, you just take it for granted. You watch movies, it's all done well. Until you yourself go out, and start taking some pictures and cutting them together and seeing how shit it looks. Nothing <laughs> um, matches and no eye lines are looking at each other and people looking left and then they're looking right and then all the action doesn't flow. It's actually tremendously tough at a technical level wow. just to get that grammar right. And great filmmakers try and communicate a lot of different things to you, not just the content of the scene. There's subtext, there's symbolism, there's you know, every little thing you do in a movie, from how you light it to whether it's a, it's a close-up whether we're this close or this close or this close or this close, all has a different emotional sensibility that it's, it's going to affect you in different ways. And, and lens choice, by the way, is one of the, the biggest choices one makes with every shot that you check. Which lens are we going to put on? Are we going for a fisheye wide lens or are we going for a very long lens? Uh, and lenses actually see the world quite differently to the way that our eyes do because they choose a particular plane, a focal length to look at. But our eyes can move. It can, our eyes pull focus literally. So when we mm. look at a scene, like I'm looking out the window now at Table Mountain, I can, I can either focus on Table Mountain or focus on my feet at the end of the bed. I do it instantly. I don't even do it consciously. I, I just do it by, by moving my attention to my feet and my eyes automatically pull focus. But a camera doesn't do that. A camera must choose to pull focus. So the good companies like Ford has a whole division and their job is to put their Ford motor vehicles in films. <laughs> that, there's a guy who's that is his job. Wow. <laughs> and so when you want cars for a movie, this is now in America, obviously, not South Africa, you phone him up and just say, hey, we got this movie, what's it about? Okay, cool. And he would be like suggesting cars to you. This guy should drive a Ford Mustang, <laughs> this working driver. And I make sure I manage my stress levels through it because to be creative, this is where the collision of art and science or art and reality comes in. <laughs> be creative, you've got to be relaxed. You've got to be able to think. You can't jump to decisions. You've got to be considered. You've got to take in all the points of view and you've got to make one decision and you've got one chance to do it first hand. So I arrive in Pearl Harbor, which is the most secure military base in the world. Um, if you think about it, there, there are 12, I think there are 18 nuclear reactors in Pearl Harbor at any one time. Because all the submarines are nuclear reactors and all the aircraft carriers are nuclear reactors. Wow. At any one time, there's 18 of them parked and the rest of them are at sea. So it's, it's the most nuclear uh, active place in the world. 